Um, a, a moment in time that this lady saw something in me that I could never even imagine. But God allowed, Holy Spirit allowed her to see a person that a pastor did not, um, did not see, <laughs> but she saw. And from that, um, from that moment of knowing within me there was something. But sometimes you have to have someone that will speak it over you and into your life in order for it to come to pass. And I present to you that precious lady, a mighty woman of God, Apostle Jenna Alcorn. Amen. Stand all over the house and honor this woman of God. And then today, just uh, we have the bonus of, of Prophet Lane Sots with us because he calls her mama too. <laughs> Love you. Let's give Jesus a big cheer. Come on, come on. Let's give, let's give the Lord a big cheer this morning. Come on, give him some more glory and praise and honor, and we lift him this morning. Our precious Jesus. Look at somebody and say, this is a day for you today. Come on. This is a day for you. You're beautiful. How many feel a spirit of encouragement in the house this morning? Come on. I feel the victory of Jesus Christ in the atmosphere. And I'm here to tell you today that anything is possible. Just say that right now. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Come on. Say it like you believe it. Prophesy to your own self. Anything is possible. Tell your neighbor, no matter what it looks like, come on. No matter what the doctors say, no matter what the banker says, no matter what my circumstances say, in Jesus Christ, anything is possible. Say it out loud, come on, anything is possible. Say it five times, ten times. Anything is possible, God. Anything is possible, anything, anything, anything is possible, God. I give you praise and glory. I want everyone here remain standing just a few moments. Today is going to be a very unusual day because the Holy Spirit is going to change your life. After this day, you will never be the same again. How many believe that with all your heart? After this day, you'll never be the same again. Raise your hands and say, after today, I will never be the same again. My life is changing. My destiny is changing. Come on, my family is changing. My circumstances are changing. My finances are changing. The wealth of the wicked is released to the just. After today, I will have the wisdom of God. Come on, after today, I will have the peace of God. Come on, now lift your hands and thank Him that anything is possible. Anything is possible. Just remain standing just one more second. Today, all of us are here by the grace of Jesus Christ. None of us would be here without the precious Holy Spirit. We would not be able to stand here or sit here or be in this room were it not for the grace of God. Now, I want you to raise your hand and say, Father, thank you for your grace and loving mercy. And this day, I surrender to you. I believe that I receive in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Come on. It's not for man. It's, it's for Jesus. It's for Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. There's no God like Jesus. There is nobody that can touch you like Jesus, save you like Jesus, heal you like Jesus, redeem you like Jesus, restore you like Jesus, resurrect you like Jesus, help you like Jesus, be a friend like Jesus. There is nobody like Jesus. Come on, somebody. Oh, he's in this room. He's in this room. Now, I want you to be seated in faith. Come on, in faith. We are seated in faith this morning. I feel a fresh anointing this morning. You're going to experience that because I've got a lot of work to do here in the next hour. Everybody say she's got a lot of work to do. My work is cut out for me. I didn't come here to see, although your city is beautiful. I came here on assignment this morning. I'm on assignment. I'm on a mission. Since God raised me from the dead, I don't have any time to waste. I wish I had a church in the house. Oh, my Baba Shaka Baba Bahasa. How many in here has God raised you from the dead and you know you would not you know you would not be here were it not for the grace of God. 
since God raised me from the dead, I promise I made a vow to him. I will not build a ministry. I will build people. Come on, somebody. I will build people. And, and you are those people this morning. Many of you know part of my testimony in 2001, our daughter was killed in a car accident. Six months later, my mother-in-law died. 30 days later, I preached my father's funeral. Eight months later, I was boarding for Africa to start an orphanage in our daughter's memory. My father-in-law unexpectedly dropped dead. And months after that, my husband died in our arms with our 12-year-old son sitting on the bed with us. And my life was over. If you took two pennies and rubbed them together, I would have said, I'm not worth it. Somebody say, but God. Come on, I wish I had a but God. I, somebody needs to say, but God. Come on, I feel that like a prophetic word. You need to put a but God. You need to put a but God into your life right now. Just scream out of your spirit, but God. Come on, say it again, but God. I was on my way out of this world, but God. I was down for the count. I had given up hope. I lost my mind. Oh, give God a praise. I, uh, ah. Come on, we're going to pray in a few minutes, but right now. I wasn't fit to be a mama to my son. But God... Raise your hand and just give him your own glory. Come on, your own story. Come on, your own praise. Father, we just give you glory. Can we just raise our hand and praise him all over the church? Were it not for your grace and your loving mercy, we would not be here, Jesus. Today, there's people going to be launched into ministry. Today there's mantles falling from heaven. Today there's salvation coming to your house in Jesus' name. Today the healing power of God is going to collide with your illness and guess who's going to win? Somebody say praise God. Hallelujah. These are days and, and these are hours of massive change in the earth. I mean, 10 years of change in one day, we've seen it. 20 years of change in one day. The last two years, we've seen 10 years of change in one season. Only people of the Spirit are going to be able to have discernment in this hour. You won't get your discernment from the news. You won't get your discernment from your neighbor. You've got to get your discernment in the prayer closet. Come on, somebody got to get your discernment from the prayer closet. And as apostolic and prophetic voices, we teach, we train, we travail, we take territory, we equip, we activate, and we release. So you can see I've got my work cut out for me today. Come on, say I'm praying for you, sis. Come on, I'm praying for you, sis. Come on, who's praying for me this morning? Thank you for your prayers. I'm praying for you, sis, because i got my work cut out for me. More than ever, you preachers, take the torch, take the fire. Go to your prayer closet. Get full of the Holy Spirit again. Get your eyes on Jesus. He is my assignment. Get your eyes on Jesus, you preachers. Get full of fire. Get your discernment back. Get your prayer life back. Get your love for God's Word back. Get your love for the simple things of the Holy Spirit back into your life. And then go out to train, equip activate and release God's people into their ministries. And I feel that spirit here. My son is with me. Thank you. Prophet Lane Sites. Let's give him a God bless you. Can you walk over here? I know you're busy and you're, you're setting the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit and God moves in that way. I'm going to tell you, this is my son of over 25 years, Prophet Lane Sites. We have over 20 to 25 of his team here. Will you stand the Lane Sites ministry team? Let's give them a God bless you. Yeah, there you are. There you go in the back back there. There you go. Good to have you guys. This is my family and I want uh, Prophet Lane to greet the people. Thank you. 
Good morning. It's so good to be here. We honor the angels of the house. We have over, I guess, 20 years of friendship now. So listen, I want to tell you something. You've got to understand your victory is voice activated. You came into an apostolic meeting this morning, and the, the key, the principle is you can't hear the word. You've got to say the word. Whatever you say is what you shall have. You ought to say this morning, I am victorious. I am healed. I am a whole. Whatever you say, you can have. The principle is not whatever you hear. If you sit here this morning and you keep your mouth shut, the enemy's got the right to say whatever he wants over you. For Psalms chapter 8 verse 2 says that the, that the Lord has ordained strength in praise, that the sound of your praise he silences your foes and your avengers, which means as long as you're quiet, your enemy can have his mouth open. But if you'll stand up on your feet and open your mouth, all of a sudden God will put duct tape over your enemy's mouth and he won't be able to do anything to you. I just want to hear a faithful people this morning say, I love you Jesus. Come on, your victory is voice activated. Silence is your prison, but your sound is your key. Make a sound in this place real quickly. Yes. Thank you, son. Come on. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. What a great anointing is in this room, people. I'm telling you, you're going to experience something this morning. And I, I'll tell you the way our services have been going lately. If it doesn't happen for you in the next hour, hour, hour and a half, you give, you, you give this thing about three days when you're sitting in your living room. And something's going to come on you that you can't shake. Come on. There's, ah, my God. Something's going to come on you that you know God has touched you in that anniversary service. I want to say this morning that I can't even describe the honor that I have of serving with Pastors Vicki and Jerry Davis. They are some of the most finest people you'd ever want to meet anywhere in the world. Honest as a day's long. Come on, that's what I like. They're honest as a day's long. She walked into a service I was conducting almost 25 years ago, and I said, stand up. It was on a Tuesday morning. We happened to be having service. Was it Tuesday morning? She didn't know we were having service on a Tuesday morning. The Holy Ghost spoke to her here to come to North Alabama to a service on a Tuesday morning, and she obeyed, not knowing, like Abraham, where she was going. She came to that meeting. I'd never seen her in my life. I said, stand up, and I gave her the prophetic word that is produced to 22 years right here. In this. I'm telling you, if you get a word from God, it will sustain you when your battle is raging, when hell is coming against your family, when you are fighting just to live. A word from God will sustain you. Can I get an amen? And I look around at you beautiful people, and I don't even just love you, I like you. And, and when I see the growth in this body, I'm so humbled and so honored to stand in your presence, Jerry and Vicki Davis, and to say, well done, children of God, well done. And I just decree and declare over your lives that in the coming days, your perspective is going to change. God is going to shift what you see. Because the Lord said, faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. So keep your eyes open, children, for you're about to see something different and something new. And when your eyes behold it, God will say, go through, go through, go through, for you will know that I am at the open door, says the Spirit. Come on, somebody, I receive it, and I believe it. I give God the praise for it. You know, this morning, we have a number of pastors and leaders and preachers that are here, but one of our dear friends, a couple, is here this morning that I have labored with for over 25 years, and that's Prophet Roger and Cheryl Hutchins. I love and honor you this morning. Will you just stand, let the people see who you are and greet you. Give them a God bless you. They preached here recently. A true prophet of God and prophetess of the Lord, I love you guys, and I honor you. Thank you for being with us today. I'm telling you, when you get in the presence of a true prophet, they've got a word. Prophet Roger, come up and greet the people this morning. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Yes, let's honor the prophet of God. He and Sister Cheryl travel all over the world. Amen. 
want you to listen to me just for a moment because the Holy Spirit spoke to me about this morning. One of the first things in the garden that God spoke to man was take dominion, multiply, and replenish. And God's been speaking to me about that word replenish. You can't replenish until it's gone. Some of you came in this building today empty. You put on a good show out front. But if you came empty, I want to warn you today that there's a replenisher in the house. There's somebody that's took dominion over hopelessness. There's somebody that's took dominion over not having any, um, uh, any courage. And they have replenished hope. And I want to tell you, if you're here today and you came and you felt empty and, God, I need something today. God's about to replenish in the house today. Come on, I feel that. How many raise your hand and say, replenish me, Lord? Come on, replenish me. Make it your prayer. That's a prophetic word. Thank you, Lord. And I, I sense that and I believe that. I receive that. I receive that. Brandon Stevens, just stand up and say hallelujah four or five times right now. Come on. No, raise your hand, son. Don't just. Come on, let's praise God with him. Brandon, move out. Move out, Brandon. Brandon, move out. Move out. Keep your hands raised, son. Come on, somebody. You better praise God right in this moment. Come on, there's a lifting. There's a lifting. Go ahead, jump in the waters. There's a lifting. Come on, the Holy Spirit is moving. We're going to pray in a few minutes, but right now we're following the systems of the Holy Spirit. We're following the systems of the Holy Spirit. You're going to be surprised what God does. We just send the word back home to our kids. Come on, our families right now. Your children, your family members, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your sons and your daughters. You're going to be surprised what God does. Father, we just decree and declare over the families in Jesus' name that there's divine order coming and a hunger for Jesus Christ. Father, we decree that those relationships that have interfered with your perfect will for our families and our children are being dispersed right now in the name of Jesus. They are being revealed for what they are, and the wrong people are leaving the lives of our loved ones. Come on, somebody. I feel that like a prophetic word. has the proper people for your loved ones. Who receives that word? Let me see. See, so many, so many, so many need that word. God has the proper people. This morning, I'm going to break the bread of life for just a little while this morning and enter into the preaching of the word. I, I want you to join me this morning in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. I don't know if Ben's back there. Where's Ben and Heather? Are they out back here? All right, just as I, could I get the scriptures on the screen? Is that possible? Uh, Matthew 1, uh, uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to take my assignment from that passage of scripture. If we could get that on, I'll just read it from the screen if you have it in the King James Version. This morning, if you're turning there, Matthew's the first book in the New Testament for our precious people that may not understand what God was doing when he said Matthew. He was beginning a New Testament, a new covenant, a new will. Hallelujah. And that's the beginning of that. After 400 silent years ending in Malachi in the Old Testament, then God began to implement the, the new covenant, which would require the blood of Jesus at the end of all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then Acts 1, the early church, was birthed under the New Testament or the new covenant. John the Baptist and everybody previous to him was in the old covenant. And everybody moving forward is a part of the new covenant. So are you a part of the old covenant or the new covenant? 
we're part of the new covenant. That's right. That's the, the new will that God has implemented. Hallelujah. And how many know the old covenant brought death, but the new will brought life. Hallelujah. The old covenant brought just a, a fearfulness, and the new covenant brings an Abba Father. You're my daddy. Hallelujah. And the new covenant, when you sinned, you had to kill a, a, a goat or a, a, or a lamb or a turtle dove or a pigeon. You had to offer some kind of blood sacrifice. But in the new covenant, Jesus has shed his blood once and for all for everyone. And, and the gospel of Jesus Christ is the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, do you love the gospel of Jesus Christ? Oh, I feel like a Baptist preacher this morning. Come on, somebody. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I bless the Lord for the gospel of Jesus Christ. This morning in Matthew uh, 25, uh, just put that Son, thank you. Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 10. And if you'll go, here we go. We have it. Thank you so much. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Can everyone say amen? amen. At the reading of the Word of God. This morning, do I have your attention? Are we praying? If you're a Christian, say amen. Amen. If you want to be a Christian, say amen. Come on, amen, amen. So in the text this morning, I'm going to be taking just a few minutes to share a prophetic word of the Lord that's on my heart. I try not to preach sermons anymore. Uh, after many, many years of preaching sermons, I'm very grateful to spend my time more in the prayer closet in the presence of God and to bring the people, you, uh, what I feel like is one of the burdens on the Lord's heart for this day and time. That's what we preachers do. We reflect Him. How many know the moon reflects the sun? The moon doesn't have any light of its own. However you see the moon, the moon is a reflection of the sun's light. And then if you see a quarter moon or an eighth of a moon or a half moon, it just simply means alignment is different. But when it gets in full alignment, how many know we have a full moon? How many want to get in full alignment this morning? And you want to have that full reflection of Jesus Christ. Where you're not growing up to look like your pastors or your leaders, you're growing up to look like Jesus Christ. We follow those that follow Christ, and God has established apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists and all sorts of workers and leaders and helpers. You find those in 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, 1 Peter 4, and Ephesians 4. Those are four places that the gifts are mentioned. They're mentioned in Ephesians 4, and they're also mentioned in 1 Peter 4. And gifts are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, and gifts are also mentioned in Romans 12. These are the gifts of the Spirit. Why does God give gifts? God does not give gifts to make me look spiritual. I don't prophesy so that you can see I have an anointing on for my life. God gives gifts simply because it reflects His generosity. Come on. Hallelujah. The gifts are the generosity of God. So when you see someone that's gifted, do not mistake that for maturity. Maturity and gifts are not the same thing. When you see someone that's gifted, just praise God for his generosity. Come on. The gifts. If a person is giving gifts, how many know you see the generosity of that person? You don't look at the character of the person that received the gift. You say God is a generous gift. So when God gives us gifts and he divides gifts as he wills, 
and his gifts are in four places in the New Testament. Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4, Romans 12, and 1 Corinthians 12. And when you see that God gives gifts to people, don't glorify the person. Don't put your eyes on the person. Put your eyes on Jesus and say, you're a generous God. Come on. You're a generous God. Your character development comes next. Your discipleship comes after you're a believer. They were believers first, witnesses second, disciples third, and then full sonship fourth, where they realize they're not just a, a, a part of God's body, amen, that God dwells in my whole body. Come on. He dwells in my whole body. Your spirit man is not the size of an acorn behind your belly button. Your spirit man is your whole body. Amen. God lives in your body. Come on. Some of you giving more God more space. I see that. I see you giving God more space. I see that. But God lives in your body. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, it starts out like this. What? With a question mark. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is the house of your spirit, which is the home of the Holy Spirit. Can you, can, oh yeah. Woo. Glory to God. So this morning, as I begin to open and break the bread of life from Matthew chapter 25, we understand the, the context, first of all. When you're reading the Bible, you can't take a scripture out of context. What is context? Well, context is simply this, that words mean what they mean in the setting in which you find them. In other words, I had a friend one time that was seeking a word from God. They just randomly opened the Bible out, and it said, I'm looking for a word from God. And it said, and Judas went and hanged himself. And they said, oh, God, I, I'm going to randomly open my Bible. They opened it again, and the, they found a random scripture that said, go thou and do likewise. That's why you need maturity. That's why you need growth. That's why you need development. That's why you need mentors and peers and leaders that you can judge and run this by them. Come on, somebody. I have those people in my life that I say, I'm feeling this. What are your thoughts on it? Because you're a praying person. You fast and pray. You stay in the presence of God. You stay away from trends. You're not impressed by current day modes. You hear from God. I want to know, what do you feel about this? See, that's, that's the judgment. Now, before I get into Matthew 25, I have a word from God. It's not going to take me a long time to deliver it because notice I didn't say I have a paragraph from God. I have a word from God. And my word is going to consist of maybe two or three sentences, and you'll know it when I get down to it. You won't you have a doubt in your mind that, wow, we just had a word. How many have your hearts open to receive that word from God? One of the things that we do in our ministry, as I said, we teach, we train, we, we travail, we take territory, we activate, we release others into their ministry. But one of the things of hearing a word of God, and I want to emphasize the seriousness of the hour that we're living in in this hour. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. And these preachers, I know Prophet Roger's been preaching about 50 years too, haven't you? A long time. Have you ever seen a day like this, Prophet? We're, we're both facing things. Have you ever seen a day like we're living in? We're, we're facing a, a whole new level that requires a new level of discernment. I'll just say that. Everything that we do now requires discernment. Not suspicion, but discernment. I don't have the te time to teach on all that. Pastor Vicki can handle that. But I will give you five ways to confirm if you're hearing the voice of God, okay? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to give you five ways to confirm if you're hearing the voice of God. Number one, validation by Scripture. You can't go off and read, make your own Bible, okay? There's only one Bible, and it has to be rightly divided, and it's God's Word, and it's God's way. So the first way we, we know we're hearing the voice of God is the validation of the Scripture. The second way we know is the outcome of the voice. Whatever you're hearing, does it glorify God? Will it bring uh, in, uh, edification into other people's lives? What is the outcome of this voice that you're hearing? The third way is by internal unction. What is the witness of the Holy Spirit inside of you concerning this voice that you're hearing? Fourth, is it Christocentric? Does it glorify Jesus at the epicenter of the Word? 
does is is it Christocentric and and filthily endorsement by others? What are your peers, your coaches, your mentors, your your leaders? your pastors, your prophets, your apostles, what are they saying concerning this word you're hearing? So do you like that? Okay, the validation of scripture, the outcome of the voice, the internal unction, the Christocentric, and the endorsement by others. Okay, these are the five ways that you know if something you're hearing is from God or not. Don't jump up and get your own word and run with it without a witness of the spirit through others that walk with God. Because if you make a life-altering decision and you fail, watch this, I said life-altering decision. It takes seven to ten years to overcome many life-altering decisions. I said life-altering. So if you're going to make a life-altering decision, just think in your mind. You have seven to ten years of backpedaling to get up to speed. Now, I will say this. There is an acceleration in the spirit right now. That if you repent and you humble yourself and you say, God, I missed the mark. I went my way. I got off the path. God said, don't worry. You're like salt. It has a preserving factor. And even though it should have been rotten, even though it should have ruined, I've got my salt in your gift and I can make up, hallelujah, for what you lost. And I believe that's restoration. And I believe that restoration is in this room this morning. I believe it with all of my heart. So when we get to our text this morning, the context, as I was saying, is words mean what they mean in the setting in which you find them. If you read anything in the Gospel of St. Matthew, it's kingship. It's Matthew presents Jesus as a king. He is the, 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 the lion of Ezekiel's four-faced man. And, and that's, for me, I look at Mark, he's an ox, he's a servant. I look at Luke, he's the face of a man, he's a son of man. I look at John, he's God, he's an eagle, he's the four-faced man. He's an eagle, he's a man, he's an oxen. But when I look at Matthew, he is a lion, he is king. It is a gospel of the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Ah, I feel something now. It's the gospel of the kingdom. That's why the many times that my life was a, a point of attack where my enemy tried to take me out and my carnal mind bombarded me with the fears and the what ifs and my carnal mind started raging. I had to go and saturate myself in the word of God, understanding that no word of God is void of power. And if God gives you a word, you can overcome with only one word. I wish I had a church in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Brandon, raise your hands and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it loud, son. Hallelujah. Somebody. You must understand, we're going to pray in a few minutes. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. But right now I'm operating under some systems and strategies of the Holy Ghost. And that is to wait upon God. That is to, to not rush in and think I know it all because I've been preaching 50 years. But I have to come in with a heart of humility. Come on. Quit adding up my age. I've been preaching since I was two years old. Come on. And so understanding that the systems of God is paying attention to the Holy Spirit. That is the systems and the strategy of God. I just feel like a prophetic word that somebody going to walk out of here today. You're going to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand and say, that's me. That's me. I'm going to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Who am I talking to? That's going to be you. I'm going to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Is that Sister Alma back there? Sister Alma, let's give her a God bless you. How I honor Pastor Vicky's mother. Oh my, I'm just seeing you back there, child. What a delight and an honor it is to have you sitting there, woman of God. So understanding this morning that when we get to Matthew's gospel, it is the gospel of the kingdom. Now let's put those scriptures back up there, and I'm going to run through all these ten verses again. If we could do that, please, in that same translation, because I want you to understand something. The Bible said the kingdom, everybody say kingdom. 
you need to underline that in your Bible because it represents a king, it represents subjects, it represents authority, dominion, ruling, reigning. Come on, don't abdicate your authority in this hour. As, as um, Prophet Roger has said, that there's some replenishment in this room. Come on, don't abdicate your authority. Be, uh, be replenished in the authority of Christ. As Pastor Vicki has said, sometimes you need to hear it spoken out. Come on. As Prophet Lane has already said, our victory is voice activated. Come on, make a sound right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, God. Make a sound, an utterance. Yes, God. Yes, God. And then it said the kingdom, that represents so many things. I, we all, all of us preachers would just w want to get on that one word and stay. But it said it's likened. There, there's a similitude to ten virgins. It has nothing to do with what girls or women. This scripture's not talking about girls or women. This is a representation. A parable is a story. Jesus told stories. It's, it's like these are actors in a scene that are going to portray the screenplay of what Jesus is going to talk about. Everybody say a parable is a story with a mysterious meaning. Parables have hidden meanings. If, if they weren't hidden, he would have just told you what the meaning was. But he spoke in parables. A parable is a story with a mysterious meaning, a hidden meaning. And so we, we find out right here that there's ten virgins, but they have nothing to do with girls and women. They have all to do with actors in a screenplay because Christ has given a story. He's telling a parable. And in this story with a hidden mystery, he says there's ten virgins, which means they weren't prostitutes. They were virgins. They were ready to meet their bridegroom. They were all ready. It didn't say they were on the street. They had lamps with them. And they all went forth to meet their bridegroom. They were dressed up. Come on, somebody. All of them. All of them were ready to meet the bridegroom. All ten. Let this sink in what the Holy Ghost is about to do in the next few verses. The next one. And five of them are wise. This is the very first time we're told a piece of information here. This information divides these ten virgins into two categories now. This is the very first time that we have new information here. That there is a division of categories. And the categories are what? Say it out loud. Five of them were. And five of them were. How many categories is that? Two categories. This is the first time in this parable that we have a piece of information that says now, even though all of them were virgins, all of them were ready to meet the bridegroom, all had lamps, now we have a different piece of information. That there's two different categories. Do you know in the church, you can also have dumb and dumber. I think I might have wrote that movie, by the way. I, you know, you have dumb and dumber. In fact, the word foolish is where we get our English word morons. You ever heard of that? I mean, I know church people. I love them, and with all due respect, but they've been baptized in stupid. They, they, don't, they still think Hebrews is the Old Testament. Come on, somebody. They think Hebrews means the men make the coffee for breakfast. Hebrews. <laughs> Prophet Larry, good to see you back there. God love you. And understanding something. When it says five were wise and five were foolish, it means five were morons. Don't look down your road, but there might be some in the church. I don't know. I'm just looking around. I don't, I'm not looking at anybody. But we have to understand the different classes of categorizations in this parable. Now we're going to find out what made them foolish and what made them wise. And I just want to say this right here. In the Old Testament, wisdom is associated with gray hair. Now, come on, it'll be a cold day in Hades for I have gray hair. Come on, somebody. I mean, a cold day. As long as there's something at the drugstore for $8, come on, somebody. Sisters, where are you? I need my sisters. I, come on. I need my amen corner now. As long as there's something for $8 at the drugstore, honey. Uh-uh. 
But in the Old Testament book of Proverbs, wisdom was associated with age and gray hair. And what happens is, when we ordain a leadership that refuses to come under submission of the wise, then God gives the church over to her foolishness. And then we start seeing churches that are foolish in their acting. They're foolish in, in their ways. And we come in and we say, where's the Holy Ghost? This feels like a bunch of foolishness to me. Because when you reject wisdom, God turns you over to foolishness. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm, I'm, i I got to tell you, I'm a mother in the Lord. I have to tell you, if you reject wisdom, God turns you over to foolishness. How many of your life has made some foolish mistakes, but you, now you wise now. You're looking after God now. All right, next verse. They that were foolish... They refuse the wisdom. They refuse the mentoring. They refuse the training, the equipping, the activating. They refused it. They took their lamps. But what happened? They took what? God's given me a word in this hour, and I've got to share it with you this morning, and I'll be out of your way. If there's ever a day you need oil, it's now. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody say oil. If there's ever a day in the Word of God, oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. In the book of uh, Numbers, you find the wilderness wanderings. In the book of Exodus, you find God giving the way out, Exodus. And the very way out in that very book is the ingredients of the holy anointing oil. There were five ingredients in the holy anointing oil. And it didn't take three of those. It didn't take two of those. It didn't take one of those. It didn't take prophet glow in the dark. It took all five ingredients. Come on, it takes all of us. Can you just raise your hands right now and pray in the spirit one minute? Come on, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit right now. Can we pray? Can we pray? Please, can we just pray for a minute? Shekel Baba Sataya. Oil, 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 oil is what we need. They took no oil. God, give us oil. Oil. Now, now the word lamp there says the foolish took their lamps. They all had lamps. A lamp in this passage, it represents the Word of God. The Bible said that your Word is a lamp and a light. Psalms 119, 105. It is a lamp and a light unto our path. But the Word without the Spirit produces ritual and religion. Do I have a church seal? Are you mad at me for saying that? Because I love you. I love you. But I've got to tell you the truth. The word without the spirit produces ritual and religion. The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Come on, somebody. And he said, they all took their lamps. Now watch this. It said they had lamps. All the virgins, they were all in the same category, all equally qualified, all virgins, but they were broken down into two groups. What are those groups? The wise and the foolish. And differentiation of the groups brings into one word, wisdom. And what does wisdom say? Wisdom say, get your oily spot. Come on. Get your oily place. Come on. What does wisdom say? Get oil with your lamps. Get oil with your lamps. Come on. This is a day we need oil. Raise your hand and say, oil. Oil me, Lord. Pour your oil on my life. Come on. Hallelujah. A hidden wisdom of God. A mystery is sealed up until it is revealed and then it is no longer a mystery. If, if something is revealed, it is no longer a mystery. And it's what made these people foolish. They took a lamp with no oil. 
although they were virgins, although they were qualified to meet the bridegroom, they took no extra oil. What are you doing just trying to get barely enough oil? What are you doing just trying to spend the minimum amount of time with Jesus? Let me tell you, the difference in the wise and the foolish was time. Time was about to prove who was really wise. Come on. I said time is the element. The test was the test of endurance. Watch this. They that were foolish took their lamps, representative of the word, but did not have the oil, representative of the spirit. Next verse. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Everybody say extra oil. Listen, when you've got the oil, you light up a dark place. Come on, somebody. When you've got the oil of the Holy Spirit, you change the atmosphere. When you've got the oil of the Holy Spirit, you bring deliverance to your children. When you've got the oil of the Holy Spirit, your mind gets renewed. When you have the oil of the Holy Spirit, you know who you are in Christ. When you have the oil of the Holy Ghost, everything in your atmosphere changes. Oh, high five somebody. Say, oil me up. Oil me up. Come on, say, oil me up. They took oil in their vessel. Now watch this. When I am in a dark place and I turn on a lamp, it does not take 30 seconds for the light to come on. It comes on instantly. I prophesy instant breakthrough. Come on. I prophesy instant deliverance. I prophesy instant provision. I prophesy instant breakthrough. Raise your hand and pray in the spirit right quick. Pray in the spirit. Please, can you pray? Please, can you pray in the spirit? The wise took oil. Raise your hand and say extra oil. This is a day for extra oil. Raise your hand. This is a day for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is a day that not one person will be left behind. This is a day that the Holy Spirit is being outpoured upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come on, your handmaidens and your sons and your young men and your old men. Somebody needs to give Jesus. Give Jesus some glory. Give Jesus some praise. The Bible said they took extra oil in their vessels with their lamps. Not just oil in their lamp, but they took extra oil. I prophesy that in the days we're living in, the Lord is requiring you to take extra oil with you. Extra oil with you. And everybody that you have influence in your family, in your home, in your sphere of influence, those are the people that will be in your only spot. Come on. We make our only spot an oily place. I brought my oil this morning. I didn't just bring it where my feet are standing. I brought my oil for this entire house. Come on, somebody. We're bringing oil for our house. Watch this. The next verse. While the bridegroom tarried. Tarried is a time word. Say a time word. While the bridegroom tarried, how many of them went to sleep? Are you kidding me? Did the wise people go to sleep? Yes. Did the foolish virgins go to sleep? How many went to sleep? I'm seeing people with great anointings that have laid them aside because the bridegroom is tarrying. The waiting has been rough and the waiting has been hard and they put anointings on shelves and they put their oil on a shelf somewhere. But God said don't go to sleep while the bridegroom is tarrying. It's a time to trim your wick. Come on. It's a time to get your lamp ready. Come on. It's a time to prepare. Raise your hand and say, I will prepare. If the bridegroom is tearing, it's time for me to trim my wig.
sick. Oh, I'm about to say something now. Next verse. And at midnight, this is a new day is coming. A new day is coming. Say it out loud. A new day is coming. And at midnight, how many know a.m. and p.m., a new day is coming. And at midnight, I prophesy a new day is coming to your house. Raise your hand and receive a new day, a new season, a new era, a fresh light, a fresh anointing. At midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. I do not so much believe that this is in the eschatological, eschatological framework of the second coming of Christ. I'm not going there on this one. I believe it's in the framework of a brand new move of God. A new wave of the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand and say, I receive. The bridegroom is coming. A new wave of glory. A new wave of anointing. A new wave of revelation. A new era in the body of Christ. Are you bearing witness with me, prophet? Prophet, do you feel this? Not just an era of eschatological where we look back and say, oh, that's referring to this or that. No, I want you to see this as behold, the bridegroom is coming with a new wave of anointing, a new season of power, a new season of miracles, a new release of glory. Come on, somebody. I feel this. Raise your hands right now and glorify God. Brandon, raise your hands, son. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout, boys. Larry, shout with him. Oh, at midnight. Oh, behold. I dare 25 people to say it's a new day believe it for me. Do you believe it for you? It's a new day. I feel God is launching ministries in this house. As the time went on, the foolishness was about to be revealed. Next verse. Then all those virgins arose. They all did. And they trimmed their lamps. But during the tarrying, there could have been some preparation. If you are waiting on something, use your waiting time as preparation. That's a word from God. That's a prophetic word right there. You missed it. I said, if you are waiting on something, use your waiting time as preparation. Well, I'm waiting for the market to turn. I, I need to buy a house. I'm waiting. Well, clean your garage out, honey. Come on, somebody. Use your waiting time. Who's waiting on the market to turn? Raise your hands. I just sense that in the spirit. Right here, this lady right here, this other lady. I just decree and declare over you that the timing and the season of God will be perfect for you. And the, the property and what is there will be readily available in the spirit. You will not miss. You will see into the realm of the spirit perfectly. And you will never miss in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. It says all those virgins arose and they trimmed their lamps. Next verse. And the foolish said to the wise, give us of your oil. Why? Why should I give you my oil? Because I was lazy. I prophesied over myself and you didn't. Why do I have extra oil? It's not because I'm worthy. Everything I stand here today is because of the grace of Jesus Christ. The total grace of Jesus Christ. But I had to learn to prophesy over myself, anoint my own self with oil, and prepare my own self. Come on, you better rise up in this day and trim your lamps. You better rise up and trim your wicks. You better prepare. You better have some extra oil in your vessels with your lamps. You better get ready in this hour. Oh, my Baba Shakata. I said, somebody. Larry, raise your hands and holler, hallelujah, boy. Please sit down, please. The foolish said, 
our lamps. Now I want to tell you something. God works by principles and biblical precedents. Here's a principle and here's a biblical precedence. That if you seek God, you will find Him. And God will give you something that Lazy Joe will not get. Come on. I wish I had a church now. Now, if your name is Joe, with all due respect, I love you. I'm just using a name. If your name is Joe, I love you, Joe. I do. But if you seek God, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Am I preaching too long or y'all bored? Can I preach some more? All right. Am I doing okay, honey? Am I preaching okay? Am I doing a good job? Should I keep going? How many more minutes? Just, just whatever, 10 or 15. Thank you. Just give her a God bless you. I, I thank you for that. If you seek God, you will get something Lazy Sue don't get. Got to have men and women equal rights. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, somebody. I got to get my Joe and my Susie's. Now watch this. Our lamps are gone out. Next verse. I'm, I'm almost finished. We're going to pray. But the wise answer is saying, not so. There are certain things you have to do for yourself that no one can do your own. As much as we love our children, we cannot keep our children from their own testimony. I love my baby, but let me tell you, I cannot keep, you cannot keep, we cannot keep our children from their own testimony. tell my son, honey, are you praying? Yes, mama, I'm praying. I said, good, because I can pray for you, but I can't do your praying for you. Son, are you quoting the word? Yes, I'm quoting the word. Oh, I can quote the word over you, but I can't do your quoting for you. There's three things you cannot give people. You cannot give people appetite. You have to own whether you're hungry for it or not. You can't give people attitude. If you got a bad attitude, that's you. That's not me. Come on. I wish I had a church now. You can't give people appetite. You can't give them attitude. And the third thing you cannot give people is aptitude. They either can turn a vowel or they can't guess a letter. Come on. Come on, clap your hands and say, preach. Preach now. I'm almost through. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. He said, go to them that sell. He said, there's reservoirs. He said, there's a supply. Come on, say supply. But the key issue was timing. Ooh, hear the word of the Lord. The key issue is timing. You get the oil when the oil is being passed out. She didn't sweep one time. She swept till she found it. Timing. That's in Luke 15. Read it yourself. Next verse, we're going to pray. And while they went to buy, everybody say timing. If I've ever seen a fresh anointing, it's in this room this morning. Raise your hands and say oil, oil, oil. Come on, keep your hand raised. Oil, 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 oil. Oil, oil in my vessels, oil in my lamps. Oil, extra oil for my journey. Anointing, discernment, gifts, habitation, high praises, worship. Oil for my journey, revelation, hidden mysteries revealed. And then it said, while they went to buy, everybody say timing. There was supply, there was reservoir. While they went to buy, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And then what does it say? I want to say this to you, and we're getting ready to pray. They all had lamps. 
they had access to the Word of God. The access to the oil qualifies you for wisdom. Listen, the lamp makes you a Christian. The oil makes you a solution. I just prophesied. Stand to your feet right now. I said the lamp makes you a Christian, but the oil of the Holy Spirit makes you a solution. Raise your hands all over this room and say, feel me, feel me, feel me. Come on, raise your hands. No, you got to shout it like you're desperate. Feel me. Shout it, Larry. Shout it, Brandon. Shout it. Shout it, Nick. Shout it. Prophet Lane's team to come stand right here. All the men, the men of the team. Brothers, if you'd be so kind to help me this morning, I love each one of you gentlemen. Walk around the front of this church and say, fill me with fresh oil. Come on, raise your hands, gentlemen, if you don't mind. Come on, fill me, fill me. I want the church to join in with these brothers right now. Come on, fill me. Fill me, fill me. Come on, Brother Jerry. I want you to join these men. Fill me, Lord. Fill some of you men, come out of your seats right now. Just the men. Come on, I want the brothers. I want the brothers. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Prophet Roger, come up here with me. Come on, I want the brothers. Just feel me, feel me, feel me. Come on, church, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to feel me, begin to feel me. Prophet, begin to pray with them right here. Any part, God, in this room, any part in the in our being does not feel, God. Find those pockets that's been restrained from being filled. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, God, feel those pockets, feel those places where the oil has not flowed. God, in the name of Jesus. Some of our sisters move out to the back, to the sides. Come on, sisters. Begin to move out and say, oil, oil. Come on, oil over our ministries. 22 years of oil and it's still flowing. Oil over our families. Come on. All over your finances. Oil, oil, oil. Stay up here, prophet. Stay up here. Oil in the name of Jesus. Oil. Come on, sisters. Move around the sides, the back. Oil, 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 oil. Oil in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Prophet Larry, come up to the platform. Hurry, hurry, come up here. Begin to pray oil. Fresh oil, God. Ah, oil, God. We need more of you, God. We want more of your oil, God. Fresh anointing, God. Fresh anointing, God. Rest in this place, God. Rest in us, God. Rest in us, God. Fresh oil now, God. Fresh oil. Fresh oil, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so holy, God. You're so holy, God. Fill us afresh now, God. Fill us afresh, God. Fill our hearts now, God. Fill our minds now, God. Fill our spirits now, God. Connect our spirits with yours, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Fresh oil, God. decree and declare oil, oil, oil. oil now in the name of Jesus we declare that we are filled fresh again a fresh fire a fresh oil fall on us this morning we declare and we decree that it will affect the way that we walk and it will affect the way that we talk we will lay hands on the sick and see them recover we will cast out devils in your name we will be filled with your spirit fresh and anew Fresh and anew, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Fill us again, fill us again where it's not just stories of what we heard, but we'll actually live and walk and reign in your spirit. And we thank you for your fresh oil this morning. We thank you for your fresh oil. 
If you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, raise your hands right now. You're going to begin to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If you've never spoken in tongues, raise your hand right now. Everybody keep their hands raised. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you baptize believers with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to open your mouth. Do not speak out of your brain. Do not speak out of the language you learned in school. Do not speak from the language of your mother and your father. But when I say three, I want you to speak from the language of the Holy Spirit. When I say three, I want everyone in this room to speak from the language of the Holy Spirit. One, two, three. Go ahead. Come on, girls. There it is. Come on, pray in the Spirit, not your language. Holy Spirit. I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Some of you are right in the sound of my voice. You say, oh, I need a change in my life. If that's you, come stand right here, right quick, hurry. I need a change in my life. Please, if you're a Christian, pray with me. Come on, I need a change in my life. God knows what it is. Come on. There's no condemnation. There's no shame here. Come on, this is all about the grace of Jesus Christ in this room. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, I'm God, I need a change in my life. Come on, are we praying? If you're a Christian, I need you praying. I need a change in my life. Whatever.